Well, many Americans have felt the frustration of getting a health care insurance denial, leading to hours and hours on the phone, trading emails with the carrier, and oftentimes never getting a solution. But there's a new company that's looking to change all of that. Our next guest runs a platform that uses AI to appeal denials for care to treat 70 autoimmune conditions like Crohn's disease and others. Patients fill out a form and AI handles the legwork, scanning health care plans and relevant state and federal laws. Joining us right now is the CEO and founder of that company, Dr. Waris Bakari. He is Claimable CEO and co-founder. And doctor, thank you very much for being with us today. Um, we think of AI making a lot of things simpler and more efficient, usually from a company's perspective. But this is pretty interesting for the consumers to actually be able to push back on denial of insurance claims. Yeah. First of all, how'd you come up with, the, with this company and how does it work? Morning, Becky. Thank you for having me on. Uh, this had been a 10-year observation of a uniquely American problem, insofar as many patients struggle with basic affordability of healthcare, which you've talked about on this show before. And also, they can't even get access. They're just denied. So it was from reading a lot of the work from Elizabeth Rosenthal, who's written on this subject authoritatively, and then working in health insurance and just seeing how old and, and legacy these systems are where the two ends on the grievance and appeals side are never joined up with the front end claim denial. And you see that patients are just caught in the middle. They, they're they caught in the maze and with no way out. And very, very few denials are actually ever appealed. If you think about it, there's something like 850 million denials every year, mm -hmm. and only about 1% of them are ever appealed. So it, obviously, they're not 850 million insured Americans. So if you work it out, it works out somewhere between 70 and 90 million Americans every year are struggling with insurance issues such as denials. Yeah, I, I mean, I've gotten caught, caught in it. I'm sure most Americans have a, at one point or another. Um, the idea of being able to fight back, particularly when you're sick, um, and to yeah. navigate a system that's impossible to navigate even when you're completely healthy. Is this part of the business model for these companies? These companies sadly thrive on breakage. Now, maybe it's not intentionally part of a business model, but I think it's become an accepted fact that very few patients appeal whatsoever. So, you know, what we've really done is try to make sure that the patient's voice is heard. We take their authentic story. So they tell us, for example, how their symptoms for rheumatoid arthritis, which my mother had, impacts their health. Uh, how their symptoms feel, their inability to work, where maybe they've had to retire early and they've left the workforce. And then they tell us about you know, how it socially isolates them. Some of these uh, patients can't actually interact with their children anymore. Uh, so they, their kids don't come home and they're, they're left kind of socially isolated. And you hear all of this. We take all of that and we, we take that narrative and add in the actual clinical evidence that justifies the medication that they need so they can get back to their life. The insurers never see this. They never, ever see this. These patients, they just kind of go away. Uh, and now we're giving them a route to be heard, a route to equitable justice. Dr. Picari, just so people know a little bit about your background, you're a former NHS physician. You've been working in health, as a health tech operator for over 15 years at places like GE Healthcare, Apple Health, Elevance Health, and Amazon Web Services. That's where you come up with the AI side of these things. I, I yeah. wonder if you can explain how the process works. A customer or a hospital reaches out to you and does what? Yeah, so at getclaimable.com, it could either be driven by a patient who has a denial, and sometimes providers won't fight back. And if you look at why, you only have to look at recent news stories like what happened to Elizabeth Potter, who now has to raise a GoFundMe. Uh, and these patients are left bending for themselves, right? So someone like Elizabeth would, would push back, and there are consequences. There's a clinic in Missouri, for example, that lost their contract with a major carrier because they fought back. So it's up to patients sometimes to actually advocate for themselves. That being said, we make it very easy for providers to refer patients for free. So a provider, you know, we don't take any money from, from any provider, for, for example. They could just refer a patient, and the patient can begin their appeal. And a provider can add in test documents such as, um, you know, uh, MRI reports, et cetera, a letter of medical necessity and then refer to patient. The patient comes into the process and they feel like the work's been done. And after about 20 minutes of the patient's time, the appeal was also sent to the insurance company. And we send it to the regulators too. Yeah, so it's a, simple it's a simple transaction fee. We did a lot of affordability studies and we came up with like the idea of like, 
really not being tied to this dysfunctional healthcare payment model and just having a simple known flat fee of around forty dollars per per appeal. So that's how that's really what we we kind of model it sort of on businesses like the ticket clinic, where so, it kind of does a very very specific thing. So I understand that aspect of it. You're a smart guy. Have you thought about what this might be mean to the insurance industry if 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 you end up fighting a lot of these, is there the idea that they would fight back with their own versions of AI to say, forget it, this is not a legit claim because of X, Y, and Z? And we talk all the time about how health care costs in this country are out of control, how it's eating up a bigger and bigger portion of GDP. What will something like this do to all of those factors? I truly hope it causes a re-rating of health insurance stocks. And so we can actually understand that where they're putting their AI is completely inappropriate today. So where they're putting their AI is in front-end denials and just fanning them out to patients indiscriminately. And what ends up happening is patients get denied their routine medications. So when a patient appeals, the important thing here is that it's actually not an AI reviewing their appeal. It has to be a human and a human with a medical degree to actually read, read through their appeal, read through the clinical evidence to understand, like, for example, is this, is this appeal appropriate? And 80% of the time, by our stats, the appeals get overturned.